told him, I said, someday, son, this will all be yours. This is all of yours someday. You get all this grandeur out here. You can have that trailer. You can have that barn. Uh, we call that the baby Jesus manger over there. This is a little chicken coop. And then here's the old barn. So this was a pasture. This originally was a cow farm. I think he also had sheep out here. So we've got an abandoned trailer out here. Then we've got this old barn, which I think is kind of salvageable just because it has a metal roof on it. So our property goes way up there, out to the road, way back in here, and the driveway runs this way. So <clears throat> this is this is the area. I'm gonna kill all this off. We're gonna bush hog it. Um, and we're gonna turn this actually into both crop and deer management. So we'll plant stuff for the wildlife as well as some crops out here too. Morning. Uh, returning a former pasture into cropland. This has been an absolute battle, people. Before I begin, and I'll say this all the way through the video, we believe in no-till and regenerative farming, but for safety reasons, um, we had to come in here and we had to turn this up. The reason being is it's this clumping fescue. You would break an ankle and you could not get a machine through it. You'll see this through the video. So we had to come in here. We had saplings. We had all kinds of this. This was just completely overgrown. Mother Nature has taken this place over. It's been abandoned for almost 10 years. There goes another tree. <laughs> and you have to, one of the first thing you learn when you're trying to reclaim a property is you have to, you have to just battle the hell out of Mother Nature. You gotta punch the living crap out of her because she will take property back over quickly. So um, that's what I'll do today. I'll just run you through, I'll show you. But this, this whole field, all these fields in here were 24 inch tall clumping fescue and there were just trees growing everywhere. I'll see if I can find a clip and put a clip up, but we're doing this not so much for crops. We will be planting some crops in here, but a lot of it's for the wildlife, um, for dove and deer and everything else. There's a ton of deer out here, so we got to feed our babies. Here we go. Oh man, so my new best friend. <laughs> He's up here bush hogging the fields that we're gonna turn into sort of agricultural fields, wildlife and some other stuff. And then, man, look at that. We bush hog this whole area up in here. Bush hog this whole area up in here. Man, just open that whole place up. Man, that looks great. So we've got this side of the field and then this side of the field plan to do some uh, we're gonna do some plantings in here and then a lot of this I'm gonna come spray this make sure it's killed off and then we'll plant clover and brassica for the deer up in here man this looks great man he bought he had a he had a smaller John Deere and he went and bought that four-wheel drive diesel 52 horsepower or whatever it is Man, that thing is a beast, absolute beast. He even said, he said, what a difference. He said, the other one was too small for me. But man, there were a bunch of, there were a bunch of trees in here like this. And he just whacked the crap out of it. Man, it looks so good. And then he's gonna go, he's gonna hook up his plow and then we're gonna plow these two fields over here. Let me show you his plow. All right, so here's his plow. Man, that thing is a beast. I don't know how the hell he's gonna get that thing hooked on there. But basically, the only thing, the only thing we're plowing up or tilling is that little two areas down there. And then I've got a small uh, disc harrow that I can come back and finish it off down there. <sighs> so the, the quick connect pieces on these deers are wonderful, but he's got an old three point plow, man. We were back here battling that three point plow forever. So maybe I'll run over there and shoot it and actually plowing. So this is the first time this field probably has ever been turned. And it's really the only the only time we'll probably do it just so we can get in it and start disking it and well, you can 
see. I mean, it's a real nice soil. It's nice and dark. So we understand, we understand no-till farming, trust me. But that's not what we're doing here. This is the first time this field has actually been planted in agriculture and it was a former pasture and it has this huge clumping fescue problem. So, um, what's very interesting though is this whole area is solid red clay, but look how dark brown this is. Look at that. Look at the earthworms in here. And it's solid. There's the upper six inches is solid black soil, and then it goes to a brown soil, which is very unusual. So the good part about this is there's a ton, there's already a ton of carbon and organic matter in this field. So this is the only time we'll have to actually come out here and do this and actually turn it. We're gonna turn this, we're gonna disc, we're gonna plow it up, we're gonna disc it, and then that's it. Uh, for the next 10, 20 years, we won't have to do this at all. But it needed this one time. And don't forget that this field, I mean, had trees growing out of it, small sapling trees growing out of it. Very cool. Ah, we can smell the crop starting to grow. So that field right there and then the little field over there will be our crop fields. And then we will turn this into our game fields up in here. morning so no tree guys today my tree guys don't work on Fridays it's actually good they get three-day weekend so David's out here again today he's got his toy his brand new 54 horsepower diesel four-wheel drive John Deere <laughs> it's a badass tractor so he he's plowed this he's turned this and now he's disking it. And then he's got a rototiller attachment and he's got a rototiller. But see how dark this soil is? Normally it's bright, bright, bright red. Look at that. I mean, it is almost black brown. So, and we have, this is what we're tilling in. <laughs> so we're taking all this right here and we're actually tilling that into the soil a good probably 18 inches deep. So we're taking that upper six inches of solid black and we're tilling it in deeper from the, from the, I think it was goats. He had goats out here. So the goat shit is being tilled in. This wheat straw is being tilled in. It's all being tilled in really deep. And so then now we'll come back and we'll turn this into no-till. So we never till this again. We're just constantly just knocking it down and replanting. But we literally could not walk on this field. So now David's got on, uh, he's got on the rototiller on the back. And that is a beast of a rototiller. <laughs> Good Lord, man.
so now what we've got is instead of instead of this black layer of six to eight inches and then hitting red clay now what we've got is you know probably close to 18 inches of this brown black and look at this all as far down as you can dig we've got this straw mixed in that dead fescue oh lord you want to see what uh 50 trees looks like <laughs> now this is just the smaller stuff the bigger stuff they took off but man look at the cedar in here there's some great shavings man look at that oh that smells so good Ooh, man, it's been a long day. So I want to get some millet planted and I'm kind of, we're kind of thinking this through as far as our hunting season goes. And we want to be able to sort of sit back here and hunt doves as they come through the field. So I don't want, and also we're going to have a deer blind up on this upper section. So I don't want anything tall blocking my view. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant millet along this side and along that side over the field and then over here along this back side I'll plant some millet over there too but today I'm going to use my uh, my my powered my disc and if you've never seen millet seed that's millet seed right there like I said I'm just going to come through and I'm just going to broadcast it by hand lightly should be work fun see the sunflower seeds on top here if I come over here I really don't see any so that should be just about perfect okay guys so I think I'm done um, I'm hoping knock on wood at 12 o'clock today we have a chance of a thunderstorm and rain and I'm really hoping we do because rain is kind of scarce right now so let me just go over exactly what we've done. All the perimeters of the property, all these perimeters over here, the edges, are gonna be brown top millet and sunflower over there. There'll be a little bit of brown top millet over in here along with the very, very back with clover and brassica back in here. On these areas in here, because we went against no-till farming just to make this safe and workable, um, I have immediately come back in here with clover and brassica and planted this up. Same thing over here. We've done that as well too. Now we will come back in and we will put our cool plants in. Now what are the cool plants? Stuff like stuff that you can't really grow at home like watermelons and cantaloupes. Um, what else? Honeydew melons. Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, sweet potatoes. We could plant potatoes out here crops that take up a lot of space that we can actually come out here and we can plant and have some fun with the other thing uh, I'm going to do another video you want to hit subscribe which is really cool is the pond is about 500 feet away from here and I plan to run a two inch irrigation hose up here with one of those big sprinklers up here so if we get into a drought in the summertime I don't lose all my crop I can actually suck it out of the pond but um I thought I saw a deer back there <laughs> but the pond is consistently draining so it's a spring fed it's a spring fed pond so I can just pull all the water I want out of that pond without draining it down at all which is really cool really cool so I have free water up here for all my crops all I got to pay for is the price of gas to run that high pressure pump so that was uh, sort of phase, the beginning of part of phase one, which was taking back the land from mother nature, that front section, which is we call sort of our farm agricultural section. And then the middle section is the house. We had the tree guys there for four and a half days. 
I mean, I bet you they pulled close to 100 trees out of there, brush piles, everything. The pond's been fixed, so we got a bunch of stuff going on. Now, the house phase, the actual um, remodeling of that house won't start probably for a couple of months, but we're going to completely remodel that house and put a new sunroom on it facing that. That'll be interesting phase. So anyways, hit subscribe and uh, I'm going to go rest because I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, Doc. Thank you.